letter from the the uh, the showroom. Yeah, I can't believe I haven't got to this yet. Right? I don't know. It was better when it was production notes. Well, I don't know what what happened that made it not as good. I mean, maybe the chicks with dicks. Uh, uh, chicks with dicks make everything worse. Weirdly enough, you know, because they're chicks and they got dicks, right? I don't know. I like my chicks to have vaginas, right? Or look, or if my chick has a dick, I don't want to know about it at all. I, honestly, honestly, I, I, I'm a one penis person, you know, in my sexual uh, uh, encounters type of guy, right? I am absolutely a a single penis person. I'm not up for you know even you know in the periphery, right? Of there being more uh, uh, penises. It, it's, it, I'm not up for it at all. Oh, man, I am in pain. Everything gets things. Oh, uh, uh, what's what I'm saying? Uh, not thundering through, um, shouldering through. No, that's the word. Can't remember. Can't remember. Uh, uh, oh, Man, yeah, like again, everything's kind of healing, but boy, right now again, my skin's all like prickly and stinging like hell. Uh, maybe I, I will have a lengthy shower after this uh, after this stream, right? That might actually uh, 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 be quite nice. Um, uh, mine's probably down to autism, says uh, 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 <laughs> Peter. Your what? Your your life being a living hell? Well, you know, it happens to the best of us. What can I tell you? Fine. During the final shoot on the UCS, Rossi Davis sees a familiar face. Well, I think you would expect to see it because, uh, you know, he 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 hired her, right? And they made a big deal about hiring her. Right? Although, again, look, he's so charming. You want to like him. You want to like the show, right? You do want to like the show. Now, um, like that, that video, Happy Birthday thing, Sylvester McCoy, was freaking lovely, right? It was very, very nice. Uh, boy, I don't want to tell you. <laughs> I, maybe it'll be good. Who knows? Closing down, season's end, the final hour. It's been a mad old shoot. Busy and nuts and hilarious and wonderful. Uh, but now it's time to pause. The lights go out over uh, all six studios. Clunk, clunk, chunk. Now, are they going to come back on? I don't know if they are. Right, uh, 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 I really uh, listen. I just I don't know if they are. This is not to him. Hey, well, look at this. There's this headline that we'll, we, we'll, we might look at if I, if I have the energy, but uh, looking unlikely at this point. Boy, I'm fading. Uh, be, uh, Disney CEO Bob Iger says, Work can improve the quality of, of uh, their films by reducing both the number of titles we release and the cost per title. Well, they do pay the cost per title like three or four times what it should be. Right, because they hire these directors, they have no idea what they're doing, and they got to like uh, um, reshoot them over and over and over again. You know, it's the uh, uh, yeah, that's why the cost per title was so high. Well, maybe that's why I think they're excited about Doctor Who and they're excited about Doctor Who with uh, Rusty Davis because <coughs> they're thinking maybe, maybe at last, right. <coughs> maybe at long last uh, uh, they got something that isn't a complete and total dud. Something else that is not a complete and total dud, right? We're going to get to this in a second, but I, I will appreciate uh, uh, a second point of view, right? A second point point of view on this. Uh, uh, we have uh, uh, somebody who um, in the green room right now, uh, uh, you know, I aspire to, I look up to, I look up to in many ways, probably because he's taller than me. Uh, actually, I have no idea. No idea. I, I look, Most people are taller than me. I, if he's not taller than me, I don't know. I wouldn't suggest getting heels, but yeah, 2023, baby. Got to fit in. Got to fit in. But this is the man who doesn't mind not fitting in. He's a man who can walk his own path. You know why? You know why he has the strength of royal blood. Royal blood pumps in his bare veins. It is uh, uh, somewhat curious royal blood. Good it is Birmingham royal blood. But bit Brummy ro uh, royal blood. It's called Birmingham's King of the Geese. Dan Hadley, how are you doing, sir? Yeah, Brummy royal blood is sort of similar in uh, alcoholic content to uh, apple cider. Really, uh, uh, very yeah. nice, very nice. I could, I could. Yeah. Oh man, I haven't had a snake bite in black for uh, many years. I could go for that. Oh, oh, that, oh. that would wipe me out. Yes, I've. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, many many uh, an evening wondering whether I'll need my stomach pumped after a session on uh, on snake yeah, bites. Yeah. But you know, if you need your stomach pumped after a snake bite black, totally worth it. Totally worth it. But I I, 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 I was just showing the, the the adoring masses. Check this out. 
This this mm-hmm. this fun little bit bit of merch I got over here. Check this out. That I, that for once actually started started working properly. I got this during the Matt Smith era, when uh, yeah. Do, do you remember this thing when it came out? Yes, I do. Yeah, I've never actually seen one though. Uh, yeah, no, it, it works really. See, look, it's floating. It works really. <laughs> well. I just I, when I put my drink down, it, it, it then uh, 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 stuck to the top magnet. But yeah, there you go. That's nah, really cool. I don't think we're gonna get mer- like days of merch that, uh, like that again, right? I I I just don't see. Uh, I I I might look. My prediction right now is I think it's gonna be very popular during the David Tennant years, but I think it's uh, I think Yasmin Finn is gonna hurt it a lot, right? I think people will be like, hey, what's up with during that? the David Tennant years or the David Tennant David hours? Tennant day, right? Yeah, David <laughs> Tennant episodes, right? I think it's gonna. Uh, uh, and then when shooting comes, people will be excited, but I think they're just going to systematically push people away with their like transgender theory, which they, they and they keep hiring more trans people to be in it. It's like uh, I, I just don't think people are interested. I think it's a thing that people go, yeah, no, I'm not interested, right? In America, in America, yeah. that'll be enough. In America, that'll be enough for people to switch off in their droves. I've no doubt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In yeah, Britain, yeah. I, you know, I, uh, in, Britain I in Britain, people are largely coming around to a similar way of thinking. If it's true that Yasmin Finney is going to be some sort of recurring presence in the show, uh, then that could really harm it. Uh, not because of anything she may do or not do, or who she is or who she isn't. Simply the fact, though, that the the weight, the political weight that will come with the extended presence. Uh, of somebody from that community and the likeliness that stories will continue to go back to that particular well. I think people will be fine to hear her story, w- w- one and done, but after that, they'll just want to move on. I don't. Wanna... I, don't. I, 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 think people are, I think people are just like, enough, okay? You do you. Stop right. trying to convince us that, that this is normal. This Mate, weird shit isn't normal. The world has changed in the, in the 18 months since Yasmin Finney was cast. Uh, it's moved fun. moved along so quickly. So it's possible that you may be onto something and that people may just think, oh, this is so 2022. And I'm not interested in any of this stuff because the resistance of the general person in the street to hearing all the about all these ideologies now, it's not even a case of that people hate them or, or strongly disagree with them. But We're just sick of hearing it. People are fed up of hearing about it. They are. The, the people who are, who are very uh, progressive in many senses, even they are getting fed up with hearing about it. So right. you, you could be right. You could be right. And I think by next year, by uh, spring next year, uh, uh, oh, they said that this year, though. That the, was, uh, the, 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 you and I... Yeah, you and I were quite were happy enough when Yasmin Finney was cast. Yeah, totally. Still am really. I mean, obviously, whatever was filmed was filmed then. It's not going to change now. Uh, but I, uh, no, yeah. no, I, I, I was more uh, uh, okay with it before the last eighteen months, where you know, where, where there was this real concerted effort to try and convince kids that be trans is being a good thing, as being something that's going to make their lives better. When it's, I think that's just going to destroy so many kids. And we keep hearing that from the the, the the detransitioners. I was asking earlier, what do you think it would take to get through to Russell D. Davis? Maybe having him sit down with a bunch of detransitioners. Uh, well, you know a lot more about this issue than I do, so I, I can only speak for myself. And so I'm not a, really aware of how but widespread that is. I've seen a couple of statistics. I'm not sure where they were from. But I did speak to somebody who's... Uh, Roommate was a detransitioner, and it did sound harrowing. Hey, look, I mean, it, here's the thing. Yeah, the reason people are on board with it because they because they were uh, systematically put on these uh, these these harrowing stories of kids going, oh, "I don't feel I can be me. I might kill myself." Right, uh, uh, and then you know, you, 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 uh, I think if you put the same thing on with detransitioners, which are the stories are horrific. There's hundreds, thousands. Right, and it's okay. just a growing number now. Right, uh, uh, I just don't think it's going to fly, mate. I think people are just like, this is, this is, yeah, you know, out of line. And also, you've got that big Muslim community in in, in England, 
which are they are not up for any of this shit anymore. They yeah. done. I mean, the, the big Muslim community in Britain, uh, it gets uh, like everything concerning race and, and ethnicity in Britain gets overblown. This makes up a tiny fraction of the general British public. It's just that there are large areas where there's a dense yeah. population it's of Birmingham of and, and, and North. <laughs> yeah, Birmingham, uh, uh, yeah, towards the North, uh, Rotherham Bradford, and places Bradford, like that. Brad, Bradford, yeah, um, particularly. So I, I don't know how they how they will feel about it, but um, yeah, I, I, my general mood of it is still I, I am pretty much fed up of hearing about the whole thing. And it, the young, the longer that Yasmin Fini uh, remains in the cast, it will keep going back to that. Well, it's going to bore me to tears. Uh, Jinx Monsoon who I initially thought was little little more or less than a clown and seemed harmless at first. Now I'm not too sure about that character because of some of the, some of the things that, that she is saying and doing, I, I, I find it troubling to be anywhere near the brand. Um, yeah, so it's not, it's not good. I, I think it will... I think that the Americans, uh, American audience, are going are likely to reject it, particularly after David Tennant's choice in T-shirts lately. Um, yeah. that's no, no judgment from me on on that at all, but it's a fact of reality that that's not going to play well abroad. In that's Britain, the thing. I would just like I would love to have David Tennant and Rusty Davis sit down and watch about and um, watch things about de- detransitioners, right? And then see see how holy of them now they are. But the thing is, they they've they, they've gone so hard into it, right? They seem to, don't they? It's 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 gonna it's gonna be rough. Anyway, I was gonna I was gonna read the production notes or whatever. Uh, uh, which I had, yeah, have, have you read this month's Doctor Who magazine yet? Uh, no, I, in fact, I only picked this up yesterday because oh, they're having right. major major. It's right behind me. They're having major distribution problems again in Britain. It's right. not due to it. It's not due to it selling out at all. It's um it's half assed distribution, and I, I think all is not well at Doctor Who magazine. The the uh, the up, the line going up that they had in November when Tennant came back to the show, I think they sustained that for two months. They couldn't get the copies into people's hands fast enough. People couldn't get hold of it. Lots of shops don't stock it anymore. And I think it may be too little too late for the magazine. And uh, well, heaven knows where it'll be. But that used on a screwdriver that sold like hotcakes. They couldn't, they couldn't make them quick yep. enough. Yeah. You know, and that's going to be the Sonic Screwdriver for like three or four episodes max, right? Sh- Shooter's getting his own one apparently. Oh, you? Th- oh, have you heard this then? I, 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 know, I, I assumed, I believed it was staying. I thought that they wouldn't go so hard no, on this. They are kaching, kaching, uh. cashing in, and putting in as much se- sellable merchandise as humanly possible. <laughs> Makes a sort of sense, I suppose. But as I just hope they put enough, as much more care into the scripts, into the casting. All that jazz. Uh, I, know. I, I, I mean, it, the, here's the tragedy. Even if they do, it's not going to do much for them, right? I mean, it's it's just not. It's uh, uh, I, I think the um, the drag factor of the um, agenderizing after Ch- Chibnall. And I, it, you know, here's the thing. Yes, Chibnall stuff was awful, and it was agenderizing. Uh, uh, and I think um, looks like Rusty Davis stuff is going to be agenderizing, and maybe not awful. But yeah, I was saying earlier about, about about Ahsoka. Have you seen it yet? No, as I said, I I think you saw my my tweet earlier on about yeah. it. I'd forgotten that it was out. That's how big an, an event Star Wars is in my life now. And you know what? I don't know if I'm even going to bother watching it's it. Pure I... Kathleen Kennedy Star Wars, right? It's pure pure Kathleen Kennedy Star Wars. In that, it's all girl bosses. It's all bland, bland girl bosses. Ray, okay. uh, Ray Stevenson is fantastic. The fifteen, the first fifteen minutes, which focus on it, fantastic. I love his character, right? Great villain. Oh, I did, everything about him is fan is great. And he's got. Here's the thing. And this is what they got. He's all. He's got, he's got a female uh, uh, Padawan, whatever. And she, and she, she's really good too. But here's the thing. You could you could have one of these characters because you you've got to remember this Star Wars is a masculine brand, and essentially the girl characters are eye candy. Right, that's that's what that's what they're designed to be. More than that, uh, uh, it's like, did, has anybody gone and rewatched uh, Obi Wan Kenobi? No. no, and I liked no. it. I liked what? it, and I haven't gone back to it. Oh man, I mean, I liked it until we had Baby Leia show up, which was like what ten <laughs> minutes in. I can't, 
watch. It was awful. <laughs> well, I thought the trailer for Ahsoka looked really good, and I think that I do like her. What's her name? Rosario, uh, Rosario Dawson. I've always liked she her. I think good. she's. I think she's, she's good. good. But the, uh, Girl Boss number two is is bland. And girl boss number three is very, oh, very bland. god! It's just it's just full of women sort of swaggering around, standing yes. up to. Yes, um, yes, that's exactly what it is, right? It's exactly. One second. We've seen it all before. You Not, really yeah. have seen, seen it all before. Here, let me see if I can find a a non spoilery screen grab that really, really. Uh, um... Ahsoka is is a such a strong character in Star Wars terms, through all those animations. People love that character. If they let her down with with a gender-driven nonsense, it could well be... not. It, it could certainly finish off Dave Filoni at Star Wars. It likely... I don't think so. I think he's doing what Kathleen Kennedy likes. They, they, they'll do this until they drop, right? <laughs> I'm sure there's one thing. Uh, 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 we, we, get, we get Gold Boss 2 introduced... Uh, now I've lost the window. Uh, doing, but she's she's supposed to be at this the, the ceremony, right? And like, no, she's on a speeder bike. And look at that! Look at that expression. That is it, a hundred percent, right? That is it, a hundred percent. So they like try and block her, and she goes, "Oh, I, look, everyone's a woman in this. Every single person is a, is a chick everywhere. There's no guy without a chick companion." Right, and I don't like these new uh, uh, R two droids. Uh, uh, but look, she's stuck and brave, and she lives in her. And here's the other uh, tell, right? If they have a space kitty cat, fuck off. Once you have a space kitty cat, that then you're in Star Trek Discovery territory. Right? <laughs> Quite, I agree. You are. <laughs> Why I'm... they put space kitty cats in? Because girls like them. Right? I'm, I, I'm ready to kiss goodbye to Star Wars now. They, I've, I'm pretty much done with it. I, I quite enjoyed a lot of the last season of The Mandalorian. I know that you did. I liked the epic yeah, film. I, I, it, yeah. still, it still was a, a several notches down from where it had been before. So I'm pretty much ready, ready to wave Star Wars off into the distance now and get on with my life. Right, right. They, and they just put out a bunch of the Disney Plus shows onto... Uh, onto uh, Blu-ray, yeah, Blu-ray. 4K. Right. The 4K, which is that they would never do, right? Uh, uh, because that's yeah, it, it all lines up. It all lines up with what you've been saying. D- uh, Disney must be in trouble because they'd only the uh, two weeks ago was when they pulled out of all physical media in in the Australia uh, right, uh, in the right, southern right. Hem- yeah. Yeah, which upset a lot of people because there's a massive amount of Star Wars fans in Australia and New Zealand, very dedicated right. fans out there, and they've gone and yeah, and people want to have this stuff on their shelves. Uh, so, <laughs> and then the, immediately after doing that, which they're still smarting from, they then announced that North American punters they can have it, but not you lot. You can't. You lot can't have it all. <laughs> right, I know. And, and look, it's it's like I like Mandalorian. I, I I downloaded them, so I'm not buy, not buying them. Leave me alone. Uh, uh, and I pay for Disney Plus. They're mine, okay? They're mine. I mean, I, again, I like the first season. It's okay. And uh, again, there's a lot of interesting law in Ahsoka, which is in, which is, but it's just replete with girl bosses who are the bestest ever. Uh, I, I, look, I was, I never, I watched Clone Wars, so I like Ahsoka, but I never watched Rebels, and there's a lot, there's, there's a lot of Rebels in there as well. Mm. So, you know, anyway, let, let me read this. Uh, uh, closing down, season's end. So, uh, do you reckon they're going to shoot season 15 or it's going to be delayed? Uh, I think, well, it was supposed to start shooting late October. They were due back, which I believe is for oh, yeah. the, that's for the 2024 Christmas special, though. I think it, I think it's quite likely that it will delay. Um, yeah, which is rid- yeah, yeah. It's ridiculous. I mean, I just, I- it is completely ridiculous. What's going on with the actors' union in the states is nothing to do with Britain. But for some reason, people have taken a leave of their senses, and it's become a moral issue. And so, uh, you know, we live in clown world. So, yeah, whatever. Probably will, whatever. <laughs> uh, um, yeah, I can. So, so, I mean, I, I, again, I think Disney are happy for every delay. These Disney, these these Hollywood studios, yes. they're ecstatic for these strikes. Right, uh, for, they want to make them go as long as well. If they if they make make them go go to Christmas, they've uh, it, they'll, they'll probably destroy the industry. But 
but they, they'll save a bunch of money. But they will probably that that, that they think they'll break the backs of the unions if they can go go to Christmas. Well, right? while That's- they keep while they keep the the strikes in the media as well. And they keep all eyes on the struggle between the, uh, even if they come across as being the bad guys in this, I don't think they're going to care about what goes on so much publicly because they can use this. They can buy time to fiddle things around. And they need time. That's court, exactly projects, court projects they've lost interest in or can't afford to do that have been previously announced. How can they get, get rid all of, that, of uh, shit. That, that Cinderella movie is a question. <laughs> it's like, I mean, Rachel Zegler, yeah. I mean, like, how does she get work? I mean, like, like she, well, I've seen her. I saw some pictures today of her in a bikini. She's incredibly hot um, below the neck, certainly. She's a bit um, washboardy. Uh, I was surprised when I saw these pictures. She's uh, she's uh, stacked, is the oh, really? expression. That I, yeah, she, oh, she's... She's in very good shape. Uh, unfortunately, uh, what's between her ears <laughs> is uh, not in such good shape, and uh, I can't see I can't see the Snow White film surviving. It's become an international joke. Things not out. I mean, maybe people have forgotten when it. By the time it comes out in two years' time, uh, yeah, it's I, next I, year I think it's supposed to come out. Is it next year? I I think that thing's dead on arrival, and that will be the straw that breaks yeah. the camel breaks the, the camel's back, and that right, girl will be Indiana Jones. Uh, well, and, and for all intents and purposes, it, it has, isn't it? It's it's uh, died a death and cost them dearly. And that girl who plays Snow White, you know, she'll be playing like the second lead detective on some NCIS show in uh, three, well, probably in about 10 years. Honestly, for me, years, so. for me, the greatest sign that we're living in a parody, and it really does feel like a 30 Rock parody, whenever I see a trailer for the Queen Latifah playing the Equalizer, I'm like, <laughs> how? <laughs> Yes. It's so bizarre. It's, oh yeah, let's get back. Caesar's there's the final hour. It's been a mad old shoot. Oh, is he so gumpy? I just wish, wish I could be on board with him. Uh, busy, nuts, and hilarious are wonderful. Oh, glorious. Uh, uh, but now it's time to pause. Now, now I, I think, well, he, he's had enough insane anal sex. He needs a bit of a right? uh, rub, rub some ointment on, on yeah, a few Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, oh, jinx. Uh, uh, Hang on. Who, who is this? Is this is this Brussels column or Scott Hancock's column? No, this is Brussels. You see, it's, oh. it's, it's, it's well written and interesting. <laughs> <laughs> That's a little spin for it. That's a little sign for it. Uh, the lights go out over all six studios. Chunk, chunk, chunk. Uh, with great big doors and large stage lights make, uh, uh, make on film. Uh, hmm. they, uh, they, they, uh, they're turned off. <coughs> they really make that noise. I always ask for it <coughs> on TV. I sit, sit in the final mix in a, uh, and if a light goes out, I say, make that a chunk. <laughs> okay. Uh, it's a bedside lamp chunk. Okay. <laughs> Actually, I've seen that in a lot of his stuff. I remember hmm. seeing that in, in what's the name? Mo- what's the name of that show we did earlier this year? Nolly. Nolly. That's it. Not Molly. Uh, the lights are still burning on just one set, the TARDIS. And there's uh, uh, Shooty and Millie acting their hearts out. It's not their last scene of the episode. I don't think I've uh, I've ever shot the last scene last or a first scene first. But uh, one uh, one in the uh, uh, this one's the middle bit of the finale. But exciting, uh, uh, exciting is at uh, is is at stake. Enemies are being fought, fought, and the Doctor fought Doctor and Ruby fight. Okay. Uh, I stand at the back of the studio. Millie catches my eye. Well, uh, Millie normally catches my eyes, darling. Uh, uh, <laughs> exactly. I, I mean, listen, I, I think Millie's in it and say, look, we've got a super hot chick for the, the, the weird hetero people. You know, you can have yeah, every risk for something to uh, glop off to. <sighs> Russell, mate, if I wanted to glop off, Doctor Who's not what I'm going to, right? Doctor Who is not, is, is, is not my, my go-to thing. No. Uh, we wave across the distance, but I don't step in. They're busy. Clock ticking, but around me, people are drawing in. Uh, crew, office, staff, actors. It's been uh, been a week of goodbyes. Yasmin Finney wrapped a few days ago, so this is the was the big news story. So uh, you you pointed out, and I, and I tend to agree with you. It doesn't mean necessarily that they're a recurring character. It could just mean no. she's there for pickups. Um, I, I to me, this sounds more like she's a recurring character. I think we have to, for the sake of our own uh, emotional, mental well-being, we have to get to. We have to believe, expect the worst, and uh, if we, and if we're if we don't get that, then we're up. We're we're one up. 
Yeah, yeah, I agree with you. Uh, uh, big hugs. Uh, see you soon. Oh, really? Uh, uh, and, and by the way, his uh, video, his uh, birthday greetings to Sylvester McCoy saying, we've never met. Do you think that's a red herring? No. Really? Okay. Uh, it's, uh, no, I thought no. it was a red herring. He's trying to put us off the scent. So he's clearly not in the 60th then. Uh, well... To be honest, I mean, it depends where Russell was when they were filming the thing anyway. Because oh, at the time, I think if the vessel was on set filming, Russell would be there. I th yeah, that's what I would think. But then again, I remember reading the his book and various other things, things that he said. And there were seismic things that happened on the show, uh, both within the context of the fiction and as regards personnel changing and it, where he couldn't be there because of the commitments. So it's not nailed on that he would be there, but I don't think McCoy or, or Colin or Pete or anybody like that will be in the 60th special. No, so I don't I, think so either. Which is, I don't, uh, think any, I think, don't think there'll be any classic Doctors at all. Maybe they will, we'll, we'll get a bit of scene like in Dare the Doctors, but I don't I, I know. I think uh, Dare the Doctors are probably the pinnacle of Doctor Who. Who knew, right? Who <laughs> knew it was going to go sideways, right? Uh, uh, yeah. well, um, where is it? It's uh, but it all comes down to this the last scene. It's a kind of tradition to go to the closing moments, uh, not a, uh, not a cast iron tradition because sometimes the last scene is in a field at 2 a.m. Okay, I'll give that a miss, but but if you can, it's nice to come and acknowledge the moment. Okay, that's nice. Uh, but there's a party tonight. God, I've heard so much about them partying, about them going to see who was that? Who, who was that? They went to see Beyonce. Yes, they saw Beyonce, didn't they? Yeah, Shooty and like, Jonathan Groff. You know, look, I'm glad you're having a good time. This better not be shit, right? I'd stop telling me about your good time. <laughs> uh, it's not a good idea, mate. Uh, the point like that helps. And so there are dozens and dozens of people standing in the shadows, offset, <laughs> bathed in, in glow monitors. Uh, one more take. Jamie, uh, Jamie director, tells Shooty to slide to the door a little slower, okay, or maybe faster. Uh, I'm too far away to hear, uh, and uh, and there to my rear, it's like you, you, it's like you always want to your rear is Bonnie Langford, the Doctor's faithful companion. Mel, come to say goodbye. By the way, I've re have you been listening to uh, Millennial Rights? I, I put it on my channel every, every Saturday night now. I've, I'm, I think I'm a couple behind on that as well, but I do listen to them. It's great. I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm doing longer chunks now. They're about 20, 25 minute ep episodes. Yeah, I think uh, it's uh, I've so got into her character through this, right? And they really, really nail her in that. And it's such a wonderful time machine of it. Like, there's so much stuff from 1999 that you wouldn't do now with today's sensibilities. And, and you just forget how far we've moved, like them having cigarettes and all kinds of things, like just like yeah. little things. And uh, uh, oh, man, like, I, I, I'm i still tr uh, plowing through the big finished fourth Doctor box set, the last one. I've got two more episodes to go. And uh, the last oh, yeah. one, the Weeping Angel one, the four-parter, was <laughs> agony. And, like an agony of uh, cliches. Yeah, uh, uh, Again, everyone's a woman. Uh, uh, you've got the evil rich man and the captain, who's a woman, uh, is married to a woman of course. I'm like, <laughs> like, for God's sake, is there anyone stray anywhere? It's uh, it's a miracle that the human race survives two three hundred years into the future because uh, clear, uh, well, I, don't, clearly... I don't know it's going to like an alien civilization will find us many years in the future. So what killed off this piece is oh uh, stupidity, just rank stupidity. Uh, uh, so where we are? So he says, uh, Mel, uh, Mel, uh, come to say goodbye. That's nice. Uh, did I say there's a party? Uh, a hug. Uh, some days I call her Bonnie. Uh, some days I call her Bonita. Uh, today I was called a bonsai. Okay. Uh, oh, I'm bonsai, am I? She says, uh, just like a tiny little shrub. Well, that actually kind of works for her. Uh, uh, I do agree with you. Then we hush and we watch the action. One more take, and I uh, look at Bonnie, and she stepped away to Cardiff for a party. Must be a good bloody party. I mean, all I can say. <laughs> she obviously likes a good time. Get a yes. For a good time, call Bonnie Langford. That's what they said on the set. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, uh, I must say, uh, I remember. Do you remember that thing, the Hot Shoe Show they used to do here and Wayne Smith? Yes. Do, you, do you think they were on the uh, Columbia Marching Pair before they recorded every episode of that? Uh, I think, I think they. Uh, uh, I didn't think about it before, but yeah, maybe them and Frank Boff and they used the same uh, uh, um, dressing room. <laughs> Could be. Frank Boff is the weirdest cokehead I've ever heard of. 
Um, <laughs> To be uh, uh, to be standing there, standing there with her, I uh, was, uh, also, I miss something. Uh, I look at Bonnie. And I think how funny, uh, f- how funny this is to be standing here with her. I consider the whole thing, life, careers, choices, and uh, and in whispers, I tell I tell her a story I've never told before. Finally, at the point, many years ago, I cast her uh, as a play school presenter. Uh, I, it didn't last. I recorded one episode. Felt pr- uh, profoundly that it was on the wrong. S- uh, I-, I was on the wrong side of camera, and uh, walked out of television center saying, "No thanks." I ch- really? I chose to go back on the doll. Really? He, he quit his job at, uh, uh, on Play School. Uh, God, you're cocky when you're young. I, I guess you are. But Russell T. Record- Davis was on the doll when I met him. Right. Well, that's what writers normally are. Right, but when uh, but when I recorded my one and only episode, we rehearsed in the uh, old North Acton rehearsal. That's what they used to do for uh, Doctor Who. Is this is, is this his play school? Looks like it. Hello. Uh, Am I caught in a time, Eddie Rabbi? What's going like on? It, it just it waits till I'm streaming. Right, and then I got to slap upstairs, and I got to re uh, uh, unplug and replug the the router. Right, that's basically what I got to do. And so, so if I vanish and you're left alone, uh, 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 yeah, you, you, I'll, I'll wing it. <laughs> you wing it. You're right. You're right. I'll Plug whistle. That, that that'll be planned. Uh, uh, I, I thought I thought I won the so play school. I as I had a lunch break, <coughs> went to the canteen, sat on my food, and there and there they were, Do- <coughs> Doctor Who. <coughs> I was in the same room with Doctor Who. Oh my! OMG! Oh my God! Uh, I, I I could see them over there. Sinister McCoy and Bonnie Langford, all smiles and energy. This was so. This must have been uh, Paradise Towers. Oh, yeah. uh, uh, and and a lot of young actors, all laughing and hooting and chatting. Uh, a bright uh, a bright bunch of fun. Even from the distance, I could tell there was fun over there. That's what they always said about the JNT eras the era. Like everything else was grey and bland, and you went into JNT's office, it was bright red, and it's like when they arrived, it was like a big splash, and like JNT yeah. was always there, right? Uh, a bright one. Uh, I didn't know them, but there was a house for Paradise Towers, and the young actors were red and blue kangs, red kangs are blessed, of course. Uh, mm-hmm. the, uh, I only thought that's uh, do- uh, my only thought. That's Doctor Who, the actual, real, genuine Doctor Who being made over there, and I'm over here in the wrong place. Oh, how I, uh, oh, how I wished! I wish with all my heart that I could have been on that side of the canteen. We could have just walked over there. Uh, uh, I then went back. To work. <laughs> yeah, I then went back to work. My one and only episode. Uh, I tucked that moment away. Uh, tucked that moment away as a memory. Once, uh, once a lifetime thing. And here I am with Bonnie Langford on the TARDIS, and that's a wrap. Whoops, claps, cheers, hooray, uh, hugs, hooray, uh, lots of noise. Phil Collison makes a lovely speech, but I am uh, uh, I am smiling, thinking of th- uh, uh, thinking 36 years. It'll be 36 years to be on the set with Bonnie Langford as man. As he's gone, he's lagged with Bonnie Langford as Mel making brand new Doctor Who. Go on, make a wish. I think we all wish that the rabbi would come back. Maybe if we if we could do this and say, "Um, is he back? He's back." I think. I'm back. There he's you back. go. Hey. But I tell you what, you, 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 we did tonight, right? we did what Russell said. We made a wish, Rabbi, and, we, and you yeah, came back. There you go. Rabbi is lagging in more ways than one, baby. More ways than one. <laughs> Let me tell you. You 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 have a show tonight, don't you? Uh, we we do. I mean, I've I've been ill the last two or three days. I'm dragging all kinds of ass today as well. I, I, but, Dee, I'm, I'm, okay, I'm wrapping the show up. I'll, 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 I'll be talking about your show because I I'm I'm like sweating like a pig. I am not doing good at all. Yes. Oh wow, this is a Steve Newell one. I'm looking forward to this. You had another yeah. one about uh, talking about the the third Doctor. Now that was a bit out of 
the the Time Warrior podcast, wasn't it? That's right. That was a segment. We, we I snip out the segments to attract the people, the, the strange people who don't watch the regular show, so that they like the 20, 30 minute ones. So I put that out, out for them. Uh, but yeah, the last time we had Stephen on with a story, we reviewed Death to the Daleks, the third Doctor story, and we went. We had a really good chat. It lasted for about two and a half hours, and we thought, yeah, get back. Cause Stephen's on the show now as one of our regular panelists, and uh, yes, yeah, so we we looked at the fourth Doctor. And, and, and he's brilliant. He is absolutely he is, brilliant. I mean, like, his knowledge of Doctor Who is incredible. He's annoyingly brilliant. And his, hello, Stephen, if you're watching. <laughs> he's, an, he's annoyingly brilliant, but more, uh, but his, um, his memory as well of stuff that happened to him when he was six and, and, and things connected with television. Obviously, working in television and film, just like Simon. Simon's worked in television and film. So between them, they know so much. It sort of shows me up for the for the Muppet that I really am. But yes, yeah, so it's myself, Simon Horton, and Stephen Noonan uh, back together again to review Image of the Fendel. But as this is one of our DW60 special episodes, it's not before we spend a good chunk of time talking about the fourth Doctor as played by Tom Baker. And we, we talk about, we talk a little bit about Mary Whitehouse as well, Doctor Who's biggest Ooh. villain in the 1970s and all sorts else besides. It's, a, it's the biggest podcast we've ever put out. This is an entire evening's worth of entertainment. So I apologize for that upfront. But to cut this stuff, the things that both Simon and Stephen say would have been a crime. So, um, yeah, get, get yourself settled down for the night. If you haven't seen well, Image of the Fendler for a while... Down at, what, nine? We drop this at eight o'clock this evening, so this is in an hour and a half. And uh, yeah, we'll be. I'll be there at the start, and it will be taking questions. And well, you can you can put questions in the live chat. We're going to get back to questions on a later show, and we've recorded another episode since this as well. So there's a third one in with myself, uh, Stephen. And, and Sarah on that one. And we're just prepping up another one with, with Simon too. So these are coming thick and fast, classic series and new series. And you're going to find this one a real eye opener, okay, I think. So I, I want to ask you, how did you choose Image of the Fendel? Because I would say, if I'm going to do mm. a Chris Boucher show, a story, this is his least one, right? This exactly. is the, the, So why did you choose this one? Well, that's kind of the reason. I chose, well, we chose... Uh, we whittled it down to a, a list of stories that we're interested in. I, I don't know if people realise, but on my show, I don't actually do that many reviews on the podcast, uh, simply because there are so many Doctor Who podcasts out there, and a lot of them just do reviews. And even the ones that don't do that many, they all tend to review the same stories. So if you if you put a search in for Tomb of the Cybermen review or Caves of Androzani review, you will find hundreds of the buggers. I If I was going to do a review season, to make up for the fact there's no new Doctor Who on this year for, until much later, I thought, let's go for some stories that are a little less talked about, but that have got real, if not actual gold, as in quality in there, then lots to talk about. So Death to the Daleks, I hadn't seen that for 20 years when I talked about it the last time. Oh, that, that, again, that was a great, that, again, that, that was a really well-chosen episode, right? I really like that one. It You'll was, uh, uh, the, the stories that we've got coming up in this. There's, um, yeah, y I think you'll feel the same about all the all the various choices that we've got. We've we haven't chosen them based on this was the greatest story ever or regeneration stories or anything like that. It's because there's some angle in there, and I think that'll become all too evident when you tune in from 8 p.m. this evening UK time for Type 40 does Image of the Fendel with a big Tom Baker discussion too. We don't get into the story for a good 45 minutes, but <laughs> that's always but, a sign of a good stream. I, 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 I would but say. There's, there's a really good reason for that. I think it'll become evident when you see it while we take a little while to get to the story itself. It's Tom Baker. So, so you know, why not? It's We really went for it on this. And uh, we're back with the live shows next Thursday from 8 p.m. on Type 40 Live 2. Can't wait to get back to that as well. So, uh, yeah, this is our uh, our podcast episode, though. Uh, and, uh, get over there and like, subscribe if you haven't already, and share it along. If you do enjoy it, if you don't enjoy it, share it anyway. I, I tell you, this, this, this is a great new segment you got. It, it really is. I'm 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 very much uh, I'm I'm very much enjoying it. Uh, uh, can you. I make, 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 make a uh, a recommend not a recommendation? You know what 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 I watched the mm -hmm. other night in in the vein of uh, you know people only watch the best. They don't really watch things that you know uh, slide by so much. You know what I watched the other night? 
Never Say Never Again from beginning to end. Have you ever seen it from beginning to end? You know what? I haven't seen that for about 20 years either. I've got it upstairs in my Bond collection. I haven't watched it for years. It is uh, uh, achingly shit. It is unbelievably <laughs> I thought you were going to say, oh, it's so much better than I remember. But No, <laughs> it's terrible, right? It's a, so the plan was they were going to do more movies, uh, mm. uh, uh, James Bond movies, with Liam Nilsson taking over the title role. Uh, 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 for going forward, I thank God it didn't happen. But uh, if you ever, if you want to put, give yourself an interesting evening, rewatch that, and we could do do a stream together about it. Here, I'd re- I'd really enjoy that. Yeah, what's it? Let me put. put I, I, I I just got all the screen grabs from it today. Yeah, we should, should I'll, uh, refresh your memory, right? So the reason it, it, that he that this guy uh, Ke- Kevin McClory, oh, uh, you know, uh, got rights to it was because he commissioned the story by Ian Fleming. And he started writing it, and then he was late on his James Bond story. So then he took the stories right for Kevin McClory and then repurposed it as James Bond. And it had uh, uh, Spectre and Blofeld in it. So that's how he got right to, to all these things. So uh, that was his court case. So when are you planning to do a, to do a show about it? I'll, I'll try and get this watched in the next few days. <laughs> Let me know. Let me put the nice. so, they do so much to make it not like uh, uh, the Eon James Bond. <laughs> yeah, but it's I like, this, It starts off like they've got these little 007s that zooms into the worst opening song ever, right? It's it's so bad. Yeah, it's uh, uh, bad. So then so they have something that looked like it would be interesting. You've got James Bond, and he's sneaking around this this uh, this compound, right? And he's re- uh, meant to rescue, rescue somebody. But the first time you see him, he's clearly older. Right, he's clearly a lot older than he was. I thought that's a really interesting thing. I've often said, if I was, if I had control over James Bond, one of the things I would do would be a second movie series with uh, an old James Bond, like Pierce uh, uh, Bronson or something in it. I think yeah. that, that that yeah. would be. A, I would love to see that. Yeah, I, I completely agree. I, I Eon. <laughs> At the moment, I'm happy. For, we've said this before. I'm happy for Eon to stay away for a little while until until culture, the yes. culture war. My name's Vila Beck in the Rabbi from another planet. Please like, share, and subscribe. And ring that little bell. Ring the little bell so you're notified when new videos drop. Yeah!